Hi guys, welcome to Magic Day. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We are gonna go to someone's house and they built Fantasyland in their basement. So I'd like to call this guy an Imagineer, even though he doesn't work for Disney, he's definitely an Imagineer in his own right. So come along with us and let's go check out Fantasyland. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't signed up for our channel and then give us a big like that always helps us out and then hit that notification bell and the notification bell will notify you every time we post a new video. We really appreciate you guys allowing us to come into your living room and I think you're going to really enjoy the video that we have for you today as we worked really hard at this and we want to thank again Travis for his hospitality. All right, we are at Fantasyland, if you guys can believe that. We're actually in Travis's Fantasyland in his basement that he's built this. What scale is this, Travis? About 70, 77 or so. About 70, 77. That is amazing. And the detail that he's put into all of his work. Notice that from the rooftop to the lighting that he's installed. So how did you find all these pieces, Travis? <clears throat> well, like the lighting, for instance, that, that was something I had, because I built a pirate ship for the Prado Homes. Okay. Um, and uh, those were what were being used as like the, the stern lamps. Uh, but those I took, disassembled, like did a little bit of changing on the color. Uh, so there's a little bit of adjustment, not a ton on those. Um, but all of the other pieces are just things I fabricated. Wow. And how did you get started into designing? And well, I've always done artsy, crafty things. Uh, yeah. This stuff has always come relatively easy to me. Um, like, I've always thought, kind of drawn the comparison, like a person that can sit down and play music yeah. You know, and it's like, how do you know how to, I was like, I don't know, and they just, it's easy. That's kind of the way art is with me, you know, um, the methods and things like that are just kind of, come kind of naturally. So I wasn't opposed to doing a lot of the manual work uh, as opposed to purchasing stuff because, for instance, like on those doors, those hinge straps, yeah. the real hinge straps are about six inches longer. Uh, no, three or four inches longer actually. And they're expensive because they come from a company in England. And same with the door poles. Those door poles you can't even get anymore. Uh, but those are really pricey. And then the, the slide bolts, and then there's uh, steel on the other side too. But the slide bolts and the steel on the other side, those are actually real. And uh, I made those, uh, you know, so they were fu fully functional. Uh, but the door poles, that was my first attempt at 3D printing anything. Um, yeah. So I molded, modeled it and then 3D printed it just, and I thought, well, if they don't hold up, then I'll mold them and cast them. Well, they've held up just fine. So. <laughs> but a lot of pieces are sculpted. Uh, you know, there, let me put it this way. There's a lot of time on most everything that you can't even calculate, you know, like, that Mr. Toad's Wild Ride sign, yeah. I don't know how many weeks that took because mm -hmm. it was a progression of trying to make sure everything was right. Um, and if if you notice, know, it's actually made in a couple of pieces and it tapers. Uh, so, you know, had to manufacture the core and then that's covered, that, that's covered in Sculpey as well and then baked because yeah. I wanted to see how I could do Sculpey. I've explored different media uh, as I've gone through this, this effort. Um, but yeah, there are some things that are fully real as far as like materials and stuff, and some aren't. But what I like to do is if you don't know that it's not what it is. For instance, up here, this rain gutter, that looks like copper but it's actually a piece of ABS pipe with a piece of uh, conduit on the outside. The only part that's actually copper are those straps that wrap around. Oh wow. And so then you colorize it and you know, paint it 
But then your brain thinks it is what it's supposed to be. You can go a long way with telling a story through paint. Now, like some of the old school Disney people, uh, that their methods and their styles and their thought processes, those Imagineers as a whole, yeah. that I would think would be inspiration because it's like, it's a group of people that came together to accomplish a particular task, but there are so many techniques and things that are just like, Trying to reverse engineer and figure out how, that I think is, is kind of the fun part. So I think that, I think if that satisfies, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. So. Thank you. So how are you able to come up with the, uh, the glass and how it... So this glass here, that's acrylic. And, and I'll tell you why. So this is acrylic. This is gallery glass. Uh, that just comes from like the craft store. Uh, this actually is split in half uh, drip line for like plants and stuff. Yeah. I just I made a tool and I split it through my uh, my bandsaw. The reason why that's glass and those are actually just held on with Velcro uh, because if there was ever like a fire or something, yeah. So that way you have uh, egress points. So same with that. Now like that one right there on the turret. Yes. That's real glass oh, and wow. that's real lead. And so that pattern is really, really close to what's actually there too. Okay. Uh, and that I just sort, I got the glass here, just locally at Kelly, stained glass. Uh -huh. uh, but there's lots of real stained glass here too. And I feel like I am in fantasy land. This is awesome. And you can look over here. And we've got the park bench. And that was all sheet aluminum, a uh, little bit of angle, and that all came from the recycle center down the street. Wow. And I bent all of it, and it but it's fully functional. You know, there's a piano hinge here, so it's just, it completely works. And you can open up the door, so it's all built exactly the same. So, and that's full scale though. That's not, not full scale, yeah. yeah. I was going to say that looks like it is. Yeah, that, um... So is that half the fun, to be able to go out and try to find the materials that you need? Yeah, um... <clears throat> yeah, and, and utilizing things... Instead of... Instead of purchasing, I like to make things, because part of it, to me, is the hurdle or the challenge. Yeah. And if it if I can do it, then it's kind of a personal reward. Like, hey, it, it, it did turn out okay. Uh, but then, like I was saying, to use materials in ways that kind of trick the yeah. mind, you know, yeah. trick people to thinking, oh, that is real, but it's really not. That's so, and then in here, uh, oh, there, the the lamp when you get off the ride. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's got. Uh, the lily pads and the frogs, and just like it is on the ride. Oh wow! And that uh, the wood there on the ceiling, there is a guy in Layton that was tearing down a fence. Yeah. And he had it on KSL, so I went and got the wood, and then just sliced it up into those individual slats. So it was pre-weathered. So did you make this with the frogs and the lily pads? Yeah, yeah, and that's actually uh, that's Sculpey as well. Uh, okay. I made a. a uh, a clay master of the frog and the loop. I probably have them somewhere. Um, and then I made a mold. And you warm the Sculpey up mm -hmm. and you can press it in there and then you freeze it and then you, then it'll come out of the mold easy without it distorting. And then you bake it. Well, while it's still pliable, you can apply it. Yeah. You get the get the rough shape. Uh -huh. And then I baked it and then, you, then I just glued them on. That's so cool. So, to do all this, you had to take lots and lots of pictures when you were mm -hmm. at, in Fantasyland. Yes. Yeah, I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds of pictures I have. And it's all, you know, some of them are like the, the normal outside shots. Yeah. But I have a lot where it's like looking at things from funny angles and, you know, taking pictures of stuff that you normally wouldn't um, just to see how it was done. Um, what's 
to, for the for in order to replicate something, obviously the more information the better. Uh, you know, and some people when I was taking pictures, they were like, what, "Why?" Because I, you know, I I would put my camera up as high and take pictures of the roof lines, and I've got pictures like looking down in a rain gutter, you know, just just things like that, just to know what what's there. Uh, but like this, this was a sheet of uh, steel from uh, Home Depot. Okay. And I, I made a pattern, cut it out. Same thing with this. And then I just hand hammered these to give kind of the that, those wing look yeah. type things. And then this piece of glass, that's one of those dome things that you would put like a watch or a baseball or something under. And I just got a, a Hobby Lobby, but it was like this much longer. Yeah. So I cut it off, but then I colorized it. So yeah, that, that window there and that window there, those ones aren't, those are the acrylic. Yeah, there are a lot of details here. I should, should probably put together a book. <laughs> that would be really cool. Because there's, there's a lot of explanation about everything. For for instance, like these these grates here, mm -hmm. um, the real ones are about that big, okay. um, and it's from a company called Urban Accessories. Uh, they have one on their their current pattern is slightly different, uh, but uh, so I modeled that and. The, uh, actually, let me get, I'll get the mud. It's just the clay. Yeah, so that's the master. Okay. And so I've got a silicone mold. And uh, so it's all hand sculpted. And then that's cast, and it's about 50% iron filings and oh. resin. So that's actual real rust, and it's pretty heavy. Then this one over here is from the same mold. But that's just colorized. But little things like that. I had a neighbor. Uh, well, she's still our neighbor. But I'm like, can you give me some pictures of these? And so she went to Disneyland with her family and took good pictures of them. Because there are things that you don't even think of until you're home and you're looking at it. And like, oh, I really wish I had a yeah. picture of that to know what it is. Yeah, uh, Snow White's Scary Adventures. I do like what Disneyland has done with Snow White Scary Adventures with the, the ride inside, how they've mm. updated it. I haven't seen the inside. Oh, wow. It's incredible. Mm. They've actually um, improved the presentation. Mm. Wouldn't you say so? Oh yeah, I love it. It's got a very magical feeling to it. Mm. In the process of doing this, that was one thing that I was surprised about. Because I actually saw a photograph one time of, of it was racks of paints. Yeah. You know, they're the, I think they're sure the names if I remember right, but anyway, they're theme park paints that you have to be certain people to even buy them. Okay. But uh, anyway, I've, I've been really surprised at how many different colors uh, I've actually had to use or mix up mm -hmm. to try to replicate stuff. So when I did this area, yeah. I was less concerned about matching things. Uh, like the window there, there's no real window there. It's just, it's just a board with a like a, a ring you know, to pull it open. There's no real window. But I wanted a window there, it's just to add to it. But once I got to this area, then I, be, you know, because it progressed, went from that area down here, then started to work its way around, and then this was one of the last. Then I started because I became more and more concerned about making things a little bit more accurate as I went uh, and then color matching and things like that but surprisingly the the volume of paints and also the the broad color palette you know because like in the stones there's blues purples greens you know oranges yellows uh, and then when you'll see it uh, an example of it down here but if you're looking at this, this door, yeah. it's a different color scheme at the bottom and it becomes a different, it changes color schemes once it gets to the top. It's darker at the bottom and then gradually gets lighter. Yeah. And I, ha I think that that may be a form of, have you heard the term forced perspective? Yes. So you can have forced perspective through uh, structure, you know, where it's physically scaled differently. 
but then there's forced perspective through color. Like Cars Land is a good example. You have there what's called atmospheric uh, uh, perspective because the farther things are away, the more blue and pale they get. Well, in order for your brain to think things are farther away, you have a bright color palette here. You match kind of the texture, but you change the palette as it gets farther and farther away. And then you think, oh, that must be really far away. But if you looked at it from a side view, you're like, oh, that's not really far at all. <laughs> so. How did you uh, make these up here? Uh, <clears throat> those, I made a clay sculpture of the head, just the face. Okay. The wood behind it, those are actually four by fours. Um, but then I sculpted a, or I made a mold, that one was made out of a latex, so it, the latex actually kind of shrinks over time. Um, but each one of those was cast and then adhered to the outside of those four by fours. Yeah, those were one of the first things I made too. Yeah, I'm just amazed at your detail. It's awesome. Thanks. This is another example of uh, just PVC or ABS. But like to make a fake joint, that was just a piece of tape. And then I just put the color on there and you just hit it with a little bit of water. Yeah. And then it kind of disperses. And uh, but anyway, that gives you that fake line. But then this, I cut each piece individually, glued them back together and then sanded them and stuff to make it look like it was bent and corrugated. Wow. But, but that, was, that was one of the first things too. And funny thing, so that light right there in the corner yeah. has been on almost every single day since 2005. Holy yeah. man. I bet, you, it, I bet you it's only been off maybe three days out of that time. Really? Other than power outages. You know, yeah, you those <laughs> that's better. amazing. And I'm surprised because it's just on all the time. It has its own switch. It's on yeah. the inside of the room, but just never shut it off. That's neat. So where did you find this door handle? I made it. Oh. Um, so, and it's been kind of broken over the over the years, but yeah. it's just a regular door handle on the inside. Okay. And there's you know the hole so you can push it and unlock the car, the, unlock the the door, but it. <clears throat> it has a framework of, of metal inside, right. so that each one of these, because it's supposed to look like a hand. Yeah. Um, you know, in Snow White, where she goes out into the forest and the trees are like coming out of her. Yeah. That's what all these hinge straps are supposed uh, to be too, like roots and that's stuff. That's what I was thinking. Uh, yeah, that, that's just sculpted. It's really cool. Um, and so. I made all of the wood up there, but one of the details is right at the end is an upside down apple. Oh, oh that's for, so smart. Know, for Snow White. Very cool. Yeah, I've tried to put some little details here and there, like I've got a, a hidden Mickey right here. Oh no! There's one there. There's a couple actually, and there's in the paint um, at the other end. There's some little hidden Mickeys here and there. So like th this was this is all wood. I made all of the. It's actually um, cedar, and it came in planks. A neighbor of mine was a contractor, and he was getting rid of a bunch of wood. And I'm like, oh, I'll take it. So I made all the moldings and everything. And then it's got real glass. And then these are actually the bottoms of wine glasses I got from the dollar store. Okay. And just lightly scored the bottom and snapped them off. Wow. Uh, the real, if you were to buy something like that in real life, they're, you know, five inches in diameter or so. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, so it's got real glass, real lead. All the, so cut each ind individual piece of glass so it could fit all the way around. That took forever. Okay. And the same in the door. This, the, uh, those, uh, I forget what they're called now. But anyway. Um, Lots of uh, lots of time spent there. There's a lot of things here that are germ Germanic, so it reminds me of a lot of that as well. So um, now, like this is Tudor style, yeah. uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. But you know, you got <clears throat> like this this type of look, look that stuff, and yeah. the Village House Restaurant. Those are Germanic. So. Yeah.
Um, <clears throat> and a lot of this is not what I want to say. It's not real as far as like, you know, this is actually sculpted foam. Oh, okay. It's hard to coat it. So there's, you know, the panels. Yeah. And then that's what this is too. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of sculpted foam. Um, it's easier to work, and if you're not touching it, uh -huh. you don't know. You don't know that it's not. I mean, I I don't think even you telling me it shows that it's like I still think that's brick. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is Fantasyland like your favorite land at Disneyland? Or? Yeah. Well, yeah, that and I love like two. I think that area, and then. Pirates of the Caribbean and uh, and the Haunted Mansion. Those are my main ones. Same. So. Exact same. <laughs> so if you could build another land, would you build more in the square or a different one? Yeah, actually, so when we get down there, I'll tell you, but where Geppetto, the outside of what, I don't know what it is now because it's changed a couple of times, but <laughs> what was Geppetto's workshop? Uh, actually, I lost my train of thought because I was thinking about what other things. What was your question again? <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. So, if you could build another one, oh, what would Oh, that's, that's what it was. That area, I, I'm like, I can't figure out what I'm going to do there. Yeah. Uh, because the design started with Snow White Scary Adventures. Mm -hmm. Then I came over here. Well, and I had things mapped out. I should get them out. I drew them because I used to work, uh, I was a conductor, an engineer on the railroad. Okay. And <clears throat> you'd sit there and you had a lot of time. So I was drawing. Uh, what I wanted to have in here in the basement, and because uh, it only had a couple of walls, the rest of it was just completely open. There was just some uh, there's one bearing wall down there. Yeah. That was it. Everything else was completely open. So I'm like, I want to do something that's just different. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, so as I was mapping things out, I started getting to the point of what am I going to do against that wall? Yeah. Um, that that kind of blends logically. Uh -huh. And I don't know what to do. And then I thought, well, maybe what I'm going to do is instead of just Fantasyland, I'll do, it'll come around and then I was going to do Pirates of the Caribbean there and actually have like water and stuff. Okay. And that, I was told not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, that's still a really cool idea. Well, you'd be surprised how many people ask, are there rides? <laughs> no, no. I mean, yeah, I, honestly, I would have asked if, you hadn't said anything. Well, one, because uh, <clears throat> the the square footage of the basement's like 21, 2,100 square feet or so. One of the things is like, you know, if you, if I had the height, then it would have been cool to do all of the roofs and everything, mm -hmm. but I'd still be working on it. <laughs> if, that was, if that was the case. I mean, it's still really cool even with all the, all the roofs. Well, a lot of this stuff are just techniques that, that I'm trying, yeah. you know, try to learn new stuff and, and try to mimic the aesthetic of, of Disneyland. Mm -hmm. But like a lot of materials, like something like this is just coated and individually sculpted little uh, petals, but it's just a core of MDF that I made on my lathe okay. and then I put uh, Sculpey on the outside and baked it and then painted it. Really, really cool. Do you have like, if you could build a ride in here, what would you build? Out of the fantasy it land rides. Out of the fantasy land yeah. ones. Because <laughs> I think I know you'd build pirates it, if you it could. It would be. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would probably say, gosh, either Snow White Scary Adventures or um, Peter Pan's Flight. Oh, Peter Pan's cool. Flight I like because it's different where you're you're hanging, yeah. which apparently you can't even do anymore. It's grandfathered in, like it's not mm -hmm. it's against code or something. Because evacuation, what are you gonna do? You That's know. oh my gosh, so, I yeah. never thought of that. Yeah, so nowadays you're like you can't do that. Because I know yeah. when they were coming out with the idea of the Little Mermaid ride, it was gonna be like that, mm -hmm. and then they just were like, yeah, that that's, explains why. <laughs> that's what I've heard is it, it's for evacuation fire purposes and stuff. Gotcha. <clears throat> okay. They're recessed into the wall. Okay. That way they, they disappear and they you think they're part of the painting and then you turn on the nighttime lights and like, wait, how come? Let me turn this.
Faith what's uh, Walt say about nighttime? <laughs> I don't know about you folks, but it's way past my bedtime. The morning comes around early, and that's one of my favorite times here too. So good night. Thank you so much. Faith, did you look up at the wait times? Let's <laughs> <laughs> well, put your hands probably. At know. least 30 or 35 minutes, right? <laughs> All right. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And we want to thank Travis for his time and for letting us come to this amazing spot at Fantasyland and his basement is incredible. Alright guys, we're gonna head out. We hope you guys had fun. Thanks again to Travis and you guys have a magic day. Hey guys, I hope you really enjoyed that video on going to Fantasyland at Travis's place. Such an awesome experience to be able to go there live and actually see all the hard work and the passion that Travis has to put in time and effort to put this all together. He mentioned as we left his house that during Christmas time he does a special decoration just for Christmas and invited us back. So hopefully we'll be able to go back and do another vlog at Christmas time. So Faith and I have a lot more exciting plans coming up with some vlogs. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and then hit that notification bell so you'll be ready to see some of those exciting vlogs that we've got coming your way. Again, thanks again for watching. And if you have a comment, feel free to comment down below. And you guys, have a magic day.